Welcome to our lecture online. So we know we have what we call the theoretical probability. When you toss a coin, you know that there's a 50% chance you'll get heads and 50% chance you'll get tails. But then when you toss a coin 10 times or even 100 times, you will not get a 50-50. You will not get 50 heads and 50 tails. But the law of large numbers says that the more times you toss the coin, the closer the experimental probability will be do the theoretical probability. In other words, if you toss a coin 10 times, you might get nine heads and one tails. But if you toss a coin 100 times, it's not likely you'll get 90 heads and 10 tails. You'll be much closer to 50-50, perhaps 60-40, 55-45. And then when you toss the coin 1,000 times, you're going to get much, much closer to a 50-50 arrangement, perhaps 490 heads and perhaps 500 and tails or something like that. They'll be very close together. And again, the more times you do the experiment, the closer the theoretical, uh, the experimental probability will reach the theoretical probability. Um, and so what then, what we probably want to be able to do in the future is say, if I want to get within 5 or 10 or 2 or 1 percent of the, the theoretical probability, how many times do I need to repeat the experiment so that the empirical or the experimental probability will be that close to the theoretical probability? But that we'll tackle later. At least now we know and understand what we mean by that. And so graphically, you can take a look at this and say, all right, if this is my theoretical probability, then you can see that if I only do a few experiments, I can be off by a lot and I can swing back and forth between the two. But then as I repeat the experiment and you average all that out, eventually you get to the point where the experimental probability will be within a very, very tight envelope to the uh, theoretical probability. And so that's why it behooves us to do enough of the experiments so that the data will be reasonable and valid. And that is how we know.